there, Maverick Currency Traders. This is Rob Reinhold, and I am flying solo this week. Mr. Ankit Sharma is out of town. Let's jump into the currency room for the last week of August. In this session, we are going to be going over the previous week. We're going to look at the news, we're going to look at what happened, and we're going to look at each currency one by one. Next, we're going to score all the currencies based on strength of trend and strength of velocity. And then we take the strongest and the weakest and we pair those up and those are our trading pairs for the upcoming week. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's get ready for next week. Here's what happened last week. The equities bounced slightly, but barely slightly, and only because of Friday's small candle. But everything is still down below the 2050 moving averages, which tells us we have more of a risk off than a risk on movement right now in the markets. We did hear from Chairman Powell in the Jackson Hole Symposium. It turned out to be a non-event, all the buildup, and basically he said exactly what the market thought he was going to say. There was an initial little sell-off, and then it recovered. Basically, nothing happened on Jackson Hole. The U.S. 10-year bond backed off back down to 4.2, which was his breakout point. So it's holding air at that point. And cryptos were flat for the week. There is just no buying in sight. We have not liked cryptos for a very long time. Let's take a look at what was the economic news last week. We got these European PMIs that came out much worse than expected. As you can see across the board, even up in the UK, worse than expected. We saw the pound sell off this week and we saw the euro sell off this week. However, the euro bounced back nicely and the pound did not. We'll take a look at those charts here in a little bit. And then, as I said, the only other thing was the Jackson Hole Symposium, and that was a snooze fest. So there really wasn't all that happening last week. So if we take a look at last week's numbers, this is where we started the week. We liked the Swiss franc, the pound, the euro, the dollar on the long side, and we liked the Aussie and the Kiwi on the short side, and we didn't like any of the cryptos with the CAD and the yen in the middle. Let's take a look at what actually happened last week. Let's take a first check in on equities. You can see equities were up slightly under a percent and cryptos, they were down slightly after just a horrific week last week. They got absolutely murdered last week and there was no bounce this week. Gold up a little bit, oil down a little bit. Let's take a look at this S&P chart. Now I'm really just going to point out one candle and you already see it. Thursday's candle was a nasty, ugly candle. And this was because of NVIDIA's earnings. The market rallied in anticipation of NVIDIA's earnings. The earnings came out. They were fantastic. The market gapped up and then sold off all day long and gave us a bearish engulfing candle right at the resistance points of 4440 is exactly where it hit. This was a retest of broken support and that resistance held. However, Friday's candle didn't give the bulls anything to cheer about and it didn't give the bears anything to cheer about. In the first part of the day, this was a red candle. A red candle would have meant we we're likely to see some lower lows. Breaking down below this 43.45. As you can see, it recovered by the end of the day, but it didn't really recover on its high. It backed off a little bit. This candle is telling us nothing. Now look, in the short term, what this is telling me is that this market's not ready to break down to new lows yet. It's also telling me this market is no longer in a bull market whatsoever. So if it's not bearish and it's not bullish, what do I think it is? It's sideways. Think about where we are in the year. The last week of August, this is typically one of those weeks that people take off and go on vacation. I think we have a week of sideways ahead of us in equities. Let's take a look at what happened in the currencies. Not a whole lot of movement. You can see the pound was down almost a percent. I want to point out that Euro was down pretty big in the first part of the week and bounced back. The dollar, Swiss franc, 
they uh, they did just fine this week. But take a look at the Aussie and Kiwi. The Aussie had a nice bounce. So here's the question. We liked Aussie short last week. It did not go down. It bounced. Is that a reversal, meaning we can no longer be short the Aussie, or is that just giving us a better entry point to get back short in Aussie? We'll take a look at the charts here in just a second. Crypto, take a look at it and then just ignore it. Cryptos, you'll see in the charts, are going absolutely nowhere. So let's check into our market scores. We have a score on the equity markets at a negative two. Why? Well, it's below the 20 day moving average and below the 50 day moving average. When that is happening, that is a negative two. So we are moderately bearish on equities, meaning we have a slight risk off viewpoint in our analysis, meaning we think the risk on currencies aren't going to do as well as the risk off currencies. Let's take a look at this 10 year bond. As you can see here, we broke out, broke out of 4.2 out of year long resistance, came back and we found support there. I am not saying that equities, I'm not saying the bonds are going to rocket up to new highs because I don't think they are, but I think we can see we're likely to stay in here. More sideways price action. Here we have cryptos after last week's horrific fall. As you can see, we have sideways. Does everyone see the pattern here? We're seeing lots and lots of sideways. Let's see if there's anything on this calendar that can break us out of this malaise. Because like I said, it's the last week of August. I don't think it's going to be a great trading week. But let's look to the schedule to see is there anything that can save us. On Tuesday, we do have Australian CPI. If you are trading the Aussie, you need to know about that report and you need to be watching for it. On Wednesday, we have Chinese manufacturing. I actually think that is the biggest number for the week. That is Wednesday night. I think you definitely want to be watching that, especially if you're trading Aussie and Kiwi. And then after that, we've got employment report in the U.S. on Friday. First Friday of the month, that is U.S. non-farm payrolls report. We will be meeting live as a firm to trade that one live. So we do have a decent amount of data here, and we could get a better market than I'm expecting. But if that is the case, I don't think that week starts until Wednesday night with the China PMI. I don't like the first part of this week whatsoever. I know I'm going to be on the sidelines. So looking at this week's, markets are looking weak to sideways. Okay. Weak to sideways, that doesn't really give us a lot. There's no central banks, and we just went through the economic reports. Let's go through each currency and score them one by one with velocity and trend scores. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest U.S.-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? Let's start off with the cryptos and let's get through these quickly because you'll see they all look the same. Huge drops, huge drops and bases. That's it. That's all we're seeing. So we are at negative twos and negative threes and zeros for the velocity. Here with Bitcoin Cash, you see the same thing, dropping sideways. We check into Ethereum, a big drop and sideways. So as you can see here, we're getting pretty much the same thing here. The cryptos are saying we had a big fall and no one is buying us yet. There is no one stepping in to say this is the bottom. So that means it's likely not the bottom. Let's jump over to the foreign currencies where there's definitely more action right now in the markets. We liked the dollar last week and the dollar did really nicely. We came up, we had a base, and you can see on Friday, we broke ourselves out of that base. So we do like dollar trades quite a bit. And you can see we've got nice velocity here. Everything is going nicely for the dollar. So if you are gonna start the week with a trade, I recommend you really take a look at dollar as one of your long currencies. 
here we have the yen and the yen is just basically sitting where it is. I'm not too interested in the yen whatsoever. So for me, the yen is on the shelf for the time being. Here we have the Swiss franc. Swiss franc has been the strongest currency over the last two months. We did get a little bit of a pullback, but here's the question. Is the pullback over? I think it's a little early to say it's over, but look at what we're getting down here in velocity. We're now starting to get the EMA turned up. We're starting to get RSI strengthening above 50. I think you can also look at Swiss franc early next week as well, along with dollar. I talked earlier about the euro fall. We had this big fall and then we had a little bit of a bounce back. So as you can see here, when we look at euro and Swiss franc and then, sorry. When we look at dollar and Swiss franc and their strength, and then we come over here to euro. Okay, it's strong, but it's not as strong as those two. So we really like to focus on relative strength. So this is going to be a distant third behind dollar and Swiss franc. The pound had a nice breakout. We really caught it well. And you can see we're now just pulling back. We're still in pullback mode. So it is way too early to get bullish on pound. At this point, it's basically a no touch. I don't think you can touch the pound here. Going into the CAD, we've been ignoring the CAD for a while and we can continue to ignore the CAD for a while. There's nothing to talk about here on CAD. Here is the most interesting trade, I believe. We have the Aussie. We got a really nice bear rally. So we had a breakdown from a base. We have falling moving averages. We got a three day rally right up to it. And it gave us that red candle. The problem is it gave us a green candle after that. We like to see this kind of price action. So look, I'm not saying it's a bad short. I think it's just a little early. We got a zero on the velocity score. I think you've got to wait a little bit to get short in Aussie. I actually like the Kiwi as the better short here. Kiwi, we already had that rally and you can see we were followed by two red candles. This one just looks better to me. So for me, Kiwi is my favorite on the short side. Here is our trend score. Dollar Swiss franc are the strongest. Kiwi is the weakest on our velocity score. Dollar and Swiss franc are our strongest. Kiwi yen are our weakest. I am not interested in trading yen. This is a very easy call for the first couple days of the week. I'm looking at Kiwi dollar and I'm looking at Kiwi Swiss franc. Let's take a look first at Kiwi dollar. As you can see here, the daily chart on Kiwi dollar is just looking pretty atrocious. We've already broken down below this support level. The question is, where is it going here? Let's take a look back in history and see where is the next stop for this. And frankly, we don't have anything lower than the COVID low. The other pair I like is Kiwi Swiss franc. Same thing here. Look at the weekly chart. It is just falling off of a cliff. Where is support in this? It is now below COVID low. So if you thought a couple months ago that, boy, Kiwi Swiss franc is not going to go below COVID low, guess what? It did it. It absolutely did it. As you can see here, I love this little bear rally that we're getting little bear rally to sell into. I like this as an entry right here. So the question is, where's this thing going? You just don't know. You don't know. You're going to have to snap some Fibonacci lines or something to get a target because there is absolutely no support here on Kiwi Swiss franc, but the momentum is at the downside until it finally changes. Those are the only two trades I see even worth looking at the first part of the week. I'm not even going to look at those two. I'm going to wait till Wednesday night to see if we can get some activity out of that China PMI. And if I don't get anything there, I'll take a look Friday. If that, I'm going to enjoy the Labor Day holiday because the market always gets better after the Labor Day holiday. It always does. And so look, don't push it this week. Don't push it this week. Look forward to the holiday. Plan out what you're going to do over the weekend. Come back next week. I promise you it will be a better trading environment. That is the Currency Room. Thanks, everybody.